Despite what they seemingly want you to believe, pandas are carnivores. So how can they survive on a diet of 99% bamboo that should kill them? Hi, I'm Hannah Alper, and this is Girl Heart World. First, let's compare them to an actual herbivore, like a cow. Cows have four chambered stomachs, which contain bacteria that are great at digesting plants. Pandas, on the other hand, have a simple stomach and a short, small intestine meant to break down protein, of which bamboo contains very little. Panda keepers say that the bears will eat meat if you feed it to them, but that they won't hunt for it. So what happened here? A recent discovery of a panda skull, over two million years old, revealed that even back then, pandas were bamboo lovers. However, Minor differences in their anatomy suggest that they couldn't eat as much bamboo as the modern panda. So what pushed them to go vegan? Some scientists think that as our human ancestors' population increased, pandas were pushed into higher altitudes. The animals then adopted a bamboo diet so they wouldn't have to compete for prey with other meat eaters, like the Asiatic black bear or the awesome giganto ape. You're probably thinking, great, they adapted and evolved to their environment. Not so fast. Bamboo is becoming a more and more difficult diet for the pandas to survive on. First of all, while they can only get by on bamboo, they only digest 17% of their daily 20 to 30 pound intake, which explains their lethargic behavior. You're not going to be super active if you don't have any energy. Second of all, pandas have only found two types of bamboo that has the right nutrients, wood bamboo and arrow bamboo. But the thing is, they sprout at different times of the year and at different elevations in their mountainous terrain. In early spring during mating season, they eat young bamboo shoots and have to migrate as new bamboo sprouts at higher elevations. However, Bamboo shoots lack the calcium required for creating panda babies. So when the females get pregnant in the spring, they were actually able to pause their pregnancy until the midsummer, when the bamboo leaves with lots of calcium start to sprout. All this dietary juggling gets even worse in the winter, when bamboo nutrients drop. Half of the recorded panda deaths in the wild occur right after the winter season. But don't lose hope. Being the poster bearer of many conservation efforts has seen a population increase of over 17% since 2003. There are now over 1,800 panda bears in the wild. But the bears didn't just line up to be counted. Scientists determined the population by taking DNA from fecal and mucus samples. Fun job. I never thought I'd see this, but another exciting thing about panda poop is that it might save the world. Scientists have discovered microbes in panda poop that might actually be a solution to the search for new sources of energy. The very enzymes they have evolved to break down bamboo may be the very thing needed to create a better, cheaper biofuel. Perhaps after we save the panda bears, they can turn around and do the very same thing for us. What do you think? If we could learn this much from an animal near extinction, what can we learn from other endangered animals? Let me know in the comments, and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Girl Heart World every week. Be the change. If you want to learn more about the feeding habits of pandas, check out The Big Feed on Love Nature.